When you open up your phone or computer and start scrolling, who do you see? Chances are within a few seconds, you'll see an influencer. It could be an influencer you like, an influencer you trust, maybe even one who feels like a friend. We all like to think we're aware of the parasocial relationship that exists online. But the truth is, even if we know it exists and we recognize it, we still feel an affinity and connection to certain people that we've never met. Content creators, streamers, and influencers have done a lot of good by living their lives online. They provide endless hours of entertainment that people can access for free. They make their fans feel less lonely. They raise awareness for causes. They can help educate. But it cannot be overstated the power that lies in the hands of these individuals. Just like people in the real world, the range of influencers can run from absolute garbage trash to genuinely fantastic people. And although there are many good and positive of influencers, on the other side of the coin, there are influencers who've chosen to go down a darker path and misuse that power. These influencers see their audiences as nothing more than money printing machines and it doesn't matter to them what lies they have to tell to keep the millions of dollars flowing into their already overstuffed bank accounts. It's becoming nearly a daily occurrence that millionaire influencers are exposed for lying to their followers. Whether it's terrible products, shady businesses, undisclosed sponsorships, crypto rug pulls, scummy courses, unethical gambling codes, sketchy companies, or products that straight up do nothing, some of the worst influencers truly know no bounds when it comes to what they'll shill. We seem to be in the golden age of influencer scams, and that's not a good thing. With people like the Kardashians creating billion dollar fortunes out of not only lying to their audiences about terrible products, but they have also lied about things like their own appearances and lives. So I've gone back and forth a lot about how to break this video up. Basically, the video is gonna be in two halves with the first First half being about the influencers who promote scummy and scammy products. They have unethical sponsorships and just all around shady behavior when it comes to promoting things to your audience. And this will cover the usual suspects like the Kardashians and then newcomers like Michaela Noguera, Addison Rae, and then just problematic past situations like Jacqueline Hill. Then we'll move into the second half of the video, which will focus on the gambling sector and the influencers and streamers who are promoting gambling to their audience and also making literal millions of dollars a month off exposing their audience to gambling, especially young and impressionable audiences who are potentially being set up for bad financial futures and some even for crippling addictions. And I think I can offer you a bit of a unique insight here. As many years ago, I used to design the psychology and math behind some of the most popular slot games and I also worked for some very big gaming companies, one of which the founder and CEO was on the FBI most wanted list for over a decade, but more on that later. We'll also take a bit of a field trip to some of the biggest gaming companies in the world. So maybe grab a coffee, snack, and get comfortable because we're gonna discuss the truth behind many of these influencer scams and lies. And we'll also talk about the real life ramifications that these twisted cons have had on the mental and physical health, finances, futures, and lives of the people who trust these influencers the most, their very own fans. So I wanted to talk briefly about the Kardashians first. I do have two massive videos on the Kardashians that goes over pretty much every business and product they've had. So if you want a deep dive and a more thorough analysis, I'll leave those linked down below. I do just want to focus on more the weight loss products that the Kardashians push as I think they pretty much encapsulate the entire problem with what the Kardashians do and what a lot of these influencers do by taking these very shady sponsorships. Also something to note here that the Kardashians and a ton of other people that we're going to mention in this section about business products and sponsorships, a lot of these people also have taken gambling sponsorships or things that resemble gambling such as mystery boxes or mobile games that have a gambling element to them. So a lot of these people, the, the gambling section in the second half of this video will also apply 
apply to them. The Kardashians are, in my opinion, the people who have single-handedly contributed most to the rise in body image issues in women and young girls. I'm obviously not laying all the guilt at their feet, but no single person has contributed to this more than them. They promote fit tea, waist trainers, appetite suppressant lollipops, and so many other kinds of weight loss products, gimmicks, devices, teas, and gummies. I say this a lot on my channel, but these people are already filthy fucking rich, and yet they still find the need to promote absolute trash products that do not work, and all they are doing is earning even more money that they could never spend in their lifetime. These teas, gummies, waist trainers, and the like are at the very best doing absolutely nothing, and at worst, they are harming people. Detox teas and miracle supplements are both so angry when I see these mega companies who are making billions of dollars prey on the insecurities of young people, promise them nonsense, miraculous, snake oil-like shortcuts to lose weight, to look better, to have better skin and nails. It truly does upset me. Businesses should not make money at the expense of others like some of these companies are doing. The thing with the Kardashians promoting all these fit teas and gummies and waist trainers is that they are promoting this on their social media and saying, this helped me achieve X, this helped me do Y. When in reality, these people have a team, and I mean an enormous team of people who are their nutritionists, their chefs, their personal trainers, their plastic surgeons, because they have extensive, extensive plastic surgery. And even then, all their pictures are extensively photoshopped, plus the fact that they are extremely rich, extremely privileged. They have so much time, so much resources, of course they're going to be able to do things that the rest of us can. Because if I had someone doing absolutely everything for me and I was being driven places, when I would fly, I don't even have to stand in line at the airport, I'm just driven up to the plane. All of that adds up to more time, more resources to be able to dedicate to go to the gym, to do these things. And that's not even talking about all the plastic surgery and everything else that they have access to that regular people don't. They talk about, oh, we can get up and we can do the work. And it's like, yeah, you can get up and do the work because people are minding your kids. People are doing all your errands. People are driving you around. People are doing work for you. You really don't have to do anything if you don't want to. I have the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. You That's have to, so true. You have to surround yeah. yourself with people that want to work. for you. I mean, we've all seen the clip. They can't even cut up vegetables. They have people doing everything for them. So of course they have more time and resources, but instead they don't want to talk about that because it shows their privilege. They want to tell people, oh, I bought this $40 bag of tea and that helped me achieve everything. Because there's a really good quote from Dr. Mike, and I'm not saying like he's the greatest reference on everything, but he, he is a doctor and he did a video that I've used in my other Kardashian video talking about the fit teas. And the fact that the Kardashians, when they're called out about these teas and gimmicky things, they basically say, oh, well, promoting these products is a really easy way for, for me to make money and, you know, spend more time with my kids. And honestly, there's nothing more disgusting than that. I'm not only upset with the marketers who are pushing the agenda of these companies, but also with the influencers who are not doing their due diligence when it comes to supporting these products. If you are blessed, like I am blessed, have a following on social media and you're labeled an influencer, that means people look up to you. That means people care what you have to say. So take this opportunity to be a role model. Yes, we wanna make money and it's good to make money. It's good to be financially independent and successful, but don't do it at the expense of hurting others. Don't do it at the expense of fueling eating disorders. Jamila Jamil has it right. 
right. We should not be celebrating celebrities who are taking advantage of the system to make a quick buck at the expense of children. I never like to directly criticize anybody on my YouTube channel, but there was a quote that I recently read from Kim Kardashian saying how selling these types of supplements is an easy way to make money, and because of that, she has more time to spend with her kids. I find that quote reprehensible. This is the whole thing with all of these influencer lies and scummy products, the gambling, all of it. It's just them literally saying, I don't care about other people. I don't care about my audience, the people who trust me the most and who've supported me. All I care is about adding zeros to the bank account. And you know, some people will say like, oh, people who complain about them are, are jealous. And it's like, oh, you got me. I would love millions of dollars. Yes, that completely invalidates everything I'm saying because I too would like to be a multimillionaire, but that's not a good example because there's so many examples of influencers who have morals, ethics, and just common decency. And those people don't sell out, who don't go flogging gambling companies, who don't go pushing fit tea. Because I've got this comment before, not only on the Kardashian videos, but also like some Elizabeth Holmes stuff where people will say, oh, they're just doing what anyone would do. Like they're, they're just making money like anyone else would in their situation. No, not everyone would just take money to lie to people. Some of the biggest controversies over recent years have come out of the makeup industries. And I would say one of the biggest was Jacqueline Hill and her cosmetics company that she well, she claims was her business and her family business. And she was starting this and it was all gonna be her. She was putting all her own money into it. And also she was gonna be 100% totally involved because she wanted her followers to have this fantastic product. In reality, Jacqueline Hill didn't even own Jacqueline Hill Cosmetics. And this all came out actually quite recently because of the whole Morphe Cody bankruptcy filing. And it was revealed that her company was in that and she wasn't the CEO. It wasn't a family run business. And everything kind of blew up in 2019 when this lipstick launch happened for her company. It was the first thing that came out. And I'm sure everyone remembers there was bits of plastic and hair and like imprints on the lipsticks. And when people began receiving the packages, obviously they weren't giving good reviews and it just set off the internet kind of destroying Jaclyn Hill and she ended up, you know, talking about it. And at this stage, she was still saying that the company was hers and, you know, she was so embarrassed, but there's a lot that's come out in recent years that it was nothing to do with her and it was just this cheap manufactured lipstick that I think a lot of them were being made for 96 cents and then they were being sold for like $18. But in reality, it was a slap your name on a cheap product and then shill it to your audience because by selling this whole, it's a family run business and you know, I've put my heart and soul into it. She was pulling on her audience's heartstring and using the connection she had with them against them because of course, of course, someone is much more likely to want to support a family run business or an individual who's starting their own business much more than some huge, massive, rich, unethical corporation. So she used this whole narrative and it really ended up biting her because of how everything was done with this cheap product and the lipsticks ended up just being an absolute disaster. But at least with Jaclyn Hill, makeup made sense since she was a makeup influencer, but there's so many examples of this slap your name on a cheap product and just push it out to the audience because you want to make a lot of money. I just don't understand why they don't make a good product. Obviously they wouldn't make as much money from it, but is it really worth all the backlash that happens every time this happens with an influencer? And there's other examples even worse where people have just seen an opportunity that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Like when Shane Dawson was putting out makeup up and that was just a total, total cash grab. And then he ended up whining about how he didn't make as much money as people think. And I, I know my heart really bled because making 7 million instead of 10 million when you've put in all that time and effort into making this catalog of racist and misogynistic and homophobic videos. I mean, 
Yeah, that was a lot of effort. There's so many examples of this sort of private labeling too. Tana actually put out a can of wine recently with her name on it and people actually discovered that anyone could slap their name on this can of wine and she'd actually just bought a large batch private labeled it and then added a bunch of zeros to the price and then sold it to our audience. I also wanted to talk about a recent sort of phenomenon in the influencer arena that I've seen where people are actually creating products for problems that don't exist. This would be things like blue light skincare and blue light protection glasses, which is something that is completely made up. Real blue light, which is used in IPL, like intense pulse light, people actually pay good money to have this blue light shot into their skin. It's something that can help with acne. There's green light too that helps with aging. And this blue light that the influencers are talking about for skincare and glasses is the blue light that's emitted from computers and phones. But the thing is, that's a non-existent problem. There's zero zilch evidence, research, anything that this is a problem because you're not having your face pressed against a computer you're too far away for it to affect you. And there's just absolutely no evidence of this being an issue. But these people are making skincare that protects your skin from it and glasses that protects you from it. And there's actually no problem. I know what everybody else must need right now is another thing to worry about, to have more anxiety. And I've seen Addison Ray is shilling these blue light glasses, which just is so problematic because these people... They either don't take the five, 10 minutes to Google and see that this isn't something that even exists or they do and they just don't care because they want to make money. And especially people like Addison Rae, who is a TikToker, these people have really young, impressionable audiences who just see their favorite influencer and want to buy the product, a product that does absolutely nothing. But I wouldn't be surprised if Addison learned this from her BFFs, the Kardashians. So influencers will promote and lie about terrible and even harmful products, but also their integrity is for sale when it comes to sponsorships. We can all think of countless times we've logged onto social media and seen an influencer pushing an awful product and you know they're only doing it because of that little hashtag ad. There's many, many examples of influencers even trying to hide the affiliation or that the content is an ad because they know that their audience will pick up on this and sometimes they'll be called out. There's so many examples of influencers taking sponsorships that they haven't even looked into and quite frankly don't seem to care about at all as long as they get the money. Things like better health and establish titles. There are many influencers out there who only accept sponsorships from companies whose products they enjoy or they've used before, but many influencers will take and hype up absolutely any product, no matter how bad, as long as they're being paid. One of the biggest examples of sponsorship gone wrong was the recent Lashgate controversy with Michaela Naguera. I'm sure most people have heard about this, but basically she was being sponsored sponsored by L'Oreal. She very much tried to hide that it was an ad and she put a layer of mascara on and had nothing else on her lashes, then made a cut in the video and said she was putting on a second coat, when in reality, she went and added fake eyelashes. In this section, I'm going to share some clips from a podcast called Do We Know Them? that's hosted by two influencers, Lily Morrison and Jesse Smiles. And I think it's a lot more valid hearing about this whole Michaela thing and why it is so problematic from the viewpoint of of two people who've actually lived in that world and are influencers. I've used Lily Morrison and Jesse Smiles before as examples of good influencers, and I think their insight that they offer in their podcast is extremely interesting. And I highly recommend you check out the full episode these clips are from and their other episodes that are on their YouTube channel. You li- this literally just changed my life. This looks like false li- This is how, what? <laughs> it's this L'Oreal telescopic lift Look at the wand. Okay, so basically I'm taking the curved side and I'm going root to tip and I'm satin to coat the lashes. And then once you've done that, you flip the brush to the side and you use the hook comb to basically separate. This is one coat. Okay, I'm gonna add a second. Look at the length. Do you see that? I am speechless. 
and I'm not oh sure anyone's gonna ever be able to compete with this mascara. Yeah, probably not. I mean, start looking at the comments and people are clocking her ass because she obviously put on false lashes in the big reveal of what the mascara looks like. When she puts on oh the my mascara, God. <laughs> right? It's the same hey. time. When she puts on the mascara and says, this is one coat, <laughs> I'm gonna go back and put on another coat. This is the difference. I took the liberty of oh, putting where her, where her natural lash ends. It's a very obvious end, okay? And you can compare it <laughs> to what I have here. It's an obvious end and then the lashes continue on. Now, I used to do makeup professionally. I also just fucking love makeup as do the 15 million people who follow her. We're not fucking dumb. I know exactly what she did here. So my first thought, people were saying she put on Ardell Demi Whiskies. I was once a Demi Whiskey girl for years. Those are not Ardell Demi It looks like a full piece. No, it's not. As soon as I saw them, especially the first one she put on i said those are individual lashes the little clusters they sell you know that are like they're individuals and the reason i know that is because the length doesn't taper so she went not only did she do this okay not only did she put on lashes to falsely advertise a product that she was paid let's talk about payment in a second she used all size medium bitch she didn't even taper it off into small well, that's what i said look at the cutoff of where it goes from her normal lap like that it's insane i've seen people who are like well we don't know no no, no. this is not alleged there is no like room for speculation like she absolutely put on a false lash now some people were saying oh what's the issue with this and you know she's she's just doing the advertising that they do with food commercials and things and then other people a lot of influencers who've worked in the industry were saying this is a huge problem because you're lying to your audience and, and now you may be thinking who fucking cares you know like what's the big fucking it's deal? a fucking brand deal for mascara i care and i don't even care about mascara i want to jump to the comments really quick because the level of gaslight so her disclosure this is what it looks like when you're looking at her page for about two seconds it says l'oreal paris partner right above the green screen font right behind the captions logo so it's like super easy to overlook also she doesn't verbally say this is a partnership yeah. with l'oreal which by the way you have to do it's in between other hashtags it's all the way at the bottom one of the comments said girl did you add falsies at the end we can see the length in the outer corner to which Michaela responds no just three to four coats and my tight liner bitch you did not and then this one is kind of like stuck behind things because I could only find it on someone's video but someone said that's crazy using falsies and denying it to which she says these comments are literal proof that this mascara is the shit oh my god I'm sorry you should be fined for this and it goes back to everything that we've been talking about in this video that there's so many influencers who just do not care they do not care about their audience they do not care what they're pushing or shilling as long as they're getting money and like the Kardashians so many people will say oh you'd do the same or that person would do the same and they wouldn't there's loads of examples of people out there good influencers who turn down these sponsorships or they just go and seek out more information see it's a bad product and just don't do the sponsorship. Like the root issue and the reason why it is that deep, you're not just a person wearing false lashes. You're someone that people trust to go and buy something with your hard earned money. I actually pulled out my two Michaela palettes that I have here from Glam Light. I have supported her and I have bought things because she says they're really good. And I think that that's the fucking root thing people are missing. This is not just a person. This isn't just a model that's pretty in a commercial that you have no connection to. This is a person you've watched for like months to years who you've learned to trust, who says you can trust them, who says they're honest and who lie anyway. That's the problem. It reminds me of my take when we first started talking about Michaela actually because i was like oh she retouches her photos like do we care and you're like yeah we do care and then i realized why we care i agree with you i think a lot of people are missing the point and don't understand why all influencers are kind of annoyed at this not just makeup influencers like everyone's acting like she didn't say she wasn't wearing them she didn't just yeah. like leave it out she blatantly said that she wasn't yeah there's multiple layers to this issue but it all boils down to like people already look at influencers as like greedy little money fucking hungry bitches yeah. <laughs> you know like they already look at people like that like little goblins and, yeah and it's like that's true for a lot of people but there are a lot of honest people out there that's why again that whole like jeffree star coming in on his little horse thinking he's gonna save the world like no we have a lot of honest people on this platform and many other platforms who deserve recognition and who deserve that trust for their audience because they are honest they go out they purchase products and they try it and they dedicate their time to really reviewing things this fucks with all of that for everyone that's the problem and, and this goes back to everything i've been saying in this video there's people who will lie about a product there's people who will lie about their ad disclosure there's people who will lie about their affiliation with a company or about gambling, crypto, whatever it is. And these people are not who we should be following. These are not people that you should be building a trust and a parasocial relationship because these people will exploit you. They'll use that trust against you. So to talk about the gambling sites, there's a lot of people streaming these slot games and I don't really see it as big of a problem with poker or sports betting. Yes, people can get 
gambling addictions from those two things, but the slot games are really the worst of the worst. I have a bit of a unique insight here because I used to work for PokerStars, which is a very big gaming company. They're owned by FanDuel now. You may also have heard of them because my former CEO was on the FBI's most wanted list for 10 years. So that provided some interesting conversations at the office, including when the FBI seized our website. So I'll talk more about them when I talk about the money because they are a big fancy you know company that they had tons of celebrities that worked with us and just the money that was involved there you cannot imagine it was astronomical so then I worked for a company that their actual entire company was making slot games and I designed a lot of the psychology and math that's in these games so before we go forward the number one thing to take away from this video do not put one penny in these slot games they are designed to manipulate you everything about them bells whistles colors everything is trying to draw you in and get you to put more money in the machine. These slot games know more about you than you and it will keep you pouring money into it as long as it possibly can. So to talk about the streamers who are doing this, they're being paid millions of dollars to stream them playing and a lot of them will even say, oh, don't, don't gamble, don't gamble, but then show themselves placing a 200, 300, 400 dollar bet that turns into 20, 30, 40, 100 thousand dollars and they think that by saying that that's going to wipe away someone seeing someone put a small amount of money in a machine and getting a hundred times out of it. And yes, there was maybe 10 hours of them losing before, but people aren't gonna remember that. They're just gonna remember confirmation bias, whatever you wanna call it. They're just gonna remember a good moment. That's gonna stick out more. And when you're desperate and you have no money, which is the people that these gaming websites prey upon, you're going to take any chance you can. And I've seen hundreds of thousands of people who have tried to profit from these games and every single one of them has lost because even if you're up one day, you're gonna be down the next. I have seen people the bazillion in one chance that have hit jackpots and I mean millions of dollars and every single one of them puts every penny back in. And I know you're thinking right now, that's crazy. How could anyone do that? I would never do that. Trust me, everyone always does. Maybe you're probably thinking, oh, but I saw this streamer win. I saw them, you know, up all this money. And the first thing to say is, well, they're being paid millions of dollars to play that is coming from their audience losing and they're also being given money to play with according to a lot of them. But also, and they might not even be aware of this, they literally could be playing a different game to what is on the site or what regular people are playing. To explain what I mean by they could be playing a different game, I have to give you a little bit of a history lesson and take you on a little field trip. So the first thing to say is there is a huge difference between the unregulated and the regulated gambling industries. Most of the gambling that we see streamers doing is unregulated and the regulated companies are the ones that you'll see on TV like PokerStars, Bet365, Coral, Joe Jennings, One like that. And a lot of those companies are headquartered here in the Isle of Man. So let's go check them out. And this is one of the offices of the regulated companies and they afford these nice offices and treating their staff amazingly and catering breakfast, lunch and dinner every day and paying huge salaries and huge bonuses because they make so much money from slots. So what's the big difference between regulated and unregulated? What is the big difference between companies that are headquartered here on the Isle of Man or in Malta in Dublin and companies like Stake and other crypto casinos that are completely unregulated? Well, the unregulated companies don't have to abide by any rules whatsoever. They don't have to know even who their customers are and they also can pretty much do whatever they want. So to break all 
settle down, there's regulated gambling sites and there's game making game designer sites so basically the regulated sites would be ones that you see on television like poker stars bet 365 william hill 888 and all the ones that you'd see betting shops in the streets so those sites are completely regulated they have to follow the rules or they are fined huge huge amounts of money and they can also be blacklisted and even shut down if they don't follow the regulations unregulated sites can do whatever they want because they're unregulated. So there's also the game designers, the game makers, so those are the people that make the slots and they're completely different from the gaming sites, like they do not actually handle any of the gambling. The actual game designing companies, like the one behind me, they design the actual slot games that are then played on the gambling website. But these games are all centered around something called RTP, which is return to player. And that is the percentage that someone expects to basically lose when they decide to play a slot. The regulated sites also have to follow something called gambling aware. And there's different names for this in different countries. But basically, it's people who have a gambling addiction. There has to be some sort of protection. So if those people say, I want to, you know, be timed out for 30 days, I don't want any access to my account in New Jersey, you can blacklist yourself for life. And people need to be able to do that because there are so many people that suffer from these gambling addictions. And those crypto casinos don't have to abide by those rules either. And of course, there's always ways around these things. And I'm not saying the regulated sites have got it right. They certainly don't. I don't think it's appropriate that kids are running around in football tops with betting companies on it. I don't think that they should make it as easy as they do to sign up. And I mean, look, I'm literally walking. <laughs> and there's, there's a gambling shop right across the street. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And I, I'm not saying regulated sites, you know, are, are good either, but certainly the unregulated sites are really the worst of the worst because the unregulated sites, they don't have to abide by anything at all and they can completely rig their game. And that's not even taking into account how manipulative these games are. It's unbelievable the psychology that goes into these games and they just are getting more and more sophisticated. The other thing is, as regulations are changed or tightened, as people say, the gaming companies will always come up with a way around them or they'll invent something new to make up the revenue that they lost through these tightening of regulations. So very quickly, what I mean by their circumventing restrictions is, for example, when a few years ago they introduced a max bet amount, you used to be able to do way higher max bet amounts, like 200 a spin. And this is, of course, for only regulated games and gambling sites. So basically now there is a max bet of say 45 pounds, 45 dollars, 45 euros. And what they've done now is that you will be restricted to 45 for a spin, but they have actually the company I work for develop this respins where instead of spinning all five of the reels, you are only spinning one individual reel. So you can get into a situation like on the screen where to spin one individual reel, it will be two and a half grand basically. And of course, that's because you have increased your odds like fourfold to hit a line because you already have four things lined up because you just need to get either a gold bar or an X5 here and you'll hit the jackpot, which is 25,000. So that just means people can lose money even faster. You can literally run this game down from 100,000 to pretty much zero in about six, seven minutes. So we're going to tie this all together, I promise. People talk a lot about rigging casinos and games, and is it possible to win big? Well, the regulated games aren't rigged, I can assure you of that, because they don't need to be rigged. 
They are already making millions and millions every hour. The regulated markets have to test their games and the stipulations and testing is very strict. But the unregulated sites, as I've just explained, are beholden to no one. Earlier in this video, I showed you where a lot of these regulated gaming companies are operating from. They're operating on the Isle of Man in the UK in big company offices. And now let's take a look at where the unregulated head office of stake is. Hey, Rick, this is their headquarters, bro, on Google Maps. This is where- Give me a second here. No, 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 this is important. This is where State oh, Casino is located. Oh you my God. Do you think these people are following the rules and offering you a fair chance to win? So these unregulated sites can design these games to do whatever you want. So right now I could have a game up that is 96.5% RTP and then I could build it so that every single 10 spins, you hit a jackpot or every 100 spins, you get into a bonus round. And it's the same way that they manipulate these mystery boxes that you see people like the Ace family playing online, but they literally are rigged to show like a positive action. And they can do this with pretty much any game. And truly the streamers might not be aware that this is happening. But as I said, companies like Stake and these other crypto casinos, they do not have to do the same sort of testing that every other gaming company or game has to do. And also when people are signing up for these crypto casinos, they always think, oh, I've cracked it. I've got a VPN on and they've accepted me. And oh yeah, I can play now from wherever I want. They're setting you up for that. They don't care where you are when you're giving them money, but they will quickly change their tune if you win anything at all and try and cash it out. And don't get me wrong, VPNs are great. I have a TV channel, link below. <laughs> I use it always, but VPNs, they're old, old technology when it comes to gaming companies. I'll give you a good example. When I was working in PokerStars New Jersey, we'd open that office brand new. And at the time, only people who were in the state of New Jersey could play on the game. It didn't matter what, you know, where in the country you're a resident or what state you're in, you had to physically be in New Jersey to play the games. And people all the time would think they were fooling us with a VPN and they'd come on text chat trying to say, oh, I'm in New Jersey and it's not working. And we could literally just say, hey, you're in California, you're not in New Jersey. The technology is amazing. We're not even looking at you because, okay, you have your VPN on, but I can see into your computer and I can see where you are. And you know what else? I can see your neighbor and I can see the person across the street and I can see the person holding a phone outside your house and all those people say you're in California. So VPN, it's not gonna work. And they're only gonna tell you this when you're trying to cash out because they don't care that you're pouring money in. Even if you go to the site I mentioned that's talking only about New Jersey, you can put money in anywhere in the country. So you would have people putting money in and then they would say, oh, I, I, but I'm not in New Jersey, but I've put money in. And then when they try and take it out, sorry, we can't do that because that's money laundering. So you have to play through the funds. So all these things are just set up against you and you haven't even played the game yet. So this is just all the other ways that these things are just totally, totally set up against you. And even then when you get to the game, those are rigged against you too, because we used to have people sit with heat sensitive goggles on to see where they're looking on the screen. And in the gaming industry, especially when dealing with slot games, there's certain words that we're not allowed to use. And one of them was addiction. And another one would be manipulation. And you would have people stand up giving presentations and they would have developed, you know, some new formula or there would be some new trigger. 
And you would have people giving the presentation and they would say, okay, so right here where this, you know, sequence goes off or the player, you know, makes this bet, you can see right here on the graph where the player becomes at, I, I mean, the player becomes enthusiastic for the game. So as I said, these games are absolutely rigged against you. There's so much more to it, but I don't know whether people would find that boring. So if it's something you're interested in, like a deep dive into the sort of mechanic psychology and math behind slots, let me know below because a lot of the games, even if I saw one of them being played now, I could tell you, oh, this is a reskin of this, or this is, you know, a plus one derivative of this because a lot of them rely on the same mechanic. So I could go through and explain it. But again, I don't know whether people would find that boring. So to talk about the money, the money, the streamers are making, the money the gaming companies are making, just the money involved. I don't think that people, including myself, can grasp how much money there is. It is absolutely wild. The money they are paying these streamers is out of this world. A million a month, two million a month. But the unregulated sites aren't doing it out of the goodness of their heart. They know just how valuable the relationship between influencers, streamers, content creators, and their audience is. You know who actually made more money for the casinos at the end of the day? despite all the claims of being like this like woke anti-gambling gambler, Trey, by a long shot, he is one of the top gambling streamers getting paid the most for his gambling content. And we all know why that is. These business deals don't happen from nowhere. They don't just make up the numbers. Oh, you get 50 million, you get five million, you get one million. They're based on getting people in the door. You get paid because you get people to play. You can shuffle the numbers around, whatever, but you'll never get, your deal will get canceled if you're not pulling in the numbers. That's just the bottom line, okay? So the very fact that he says, that I made $360 million. If that's true, he at least pulled in $360 million for the casino. That's basically that admission. And that's why I'm saying, wow, what, what a scumbag, right? So this is where I think as a streamer, no matter how based you are, you know, like trains, you know, he puts in the top right-hand corner of his stream, like don't gamble, you'll lose. And then the other 95% of the sc like screen is him gambling. Um, I think no matter how much you do that, gambling 16 hours a day, you can't help but glamorize it. Why? Well, because the opposite of glamorizing something is being realistic, right? That's obvious. And showing the reality of gambling would be trained would gamble for about 10 seconds, spending a thousand dollars a spin and run out of money. Instead, he gets to gamble 16 hours a day or eight hours a day, whatever he does for an entire 16 months. And he makes money, makes millions of dollars, right? That is a glamorous picture of gambling. No matter how much you, you preach about, oh, guys, I'm just doing it and making millions. I don't want you to do it. Oh, please don't, don't gamble, don't gamble. A million a month sounds like a lot but it is absolutely nothing when compared to what these streamers are bringing in. Because not only are people coming in, using their code, playing, but they are potentially setting up lifelong players and addicts because gaming companies know just how powerful their products are that will keep people coming back again and again, especially when they're exposed to gambling at such young ages and exactly the type of people that will be in the audience of these streamers. And along with young and impressionable audiences, the other people that will be in the audience of these streamers are people who aren't as fortunate as the rest of us. And they have lonely lives or they're in bad situations. And if you don't think that watching hours and hours of a streamer that they love or that they feel connected to stream gambling non-stop, of course that's gonna affect these people. A lot of these young audiences, they want to emulate their favorite streamer or content creator. Content creation is the number one job that kids want to do. And by seeing these people gambling day in, day out, of course they're going to want to do that too. And that's not even taking into account all of the manipulation that goes into these games. And even things like we talked about before, crypto, mystery boxes, those things would never work if it wasn't for the content creators behind them. Because crypto, 
I mean, who's gonna buy one of the hundreds of thousands of shit coins that are nothing but jokes, basically? But the people that put their money in it, they're doing it because they feel connected to the creator. I mean, CoffeeZilla is obviously the king of covering all these crypto scams. And I do like Scott Schaefer's videos on this sort of thing too. So I'll leave both their channels linked below because CoffeeZilla obviously covers this stuff way better than I ever could. And he has gone so deep on things like Save the Kids and Logan Paul's Crypto Zoo. And you just see the people mainly that are affected by this are going to be young adults. And a lot of the time, maybe the kids that are watching them don't have money or don't have access to money now, but those kids are gonna grow up. They're going to want to play slots. They're going to want to buy crypto coins from their favorite influencer. And there's so many kids that have already been affected, young people, teenagers, 20 something, even grown adults. For more than a decade, Lewis has been trapped in a cycle of relapse and recovery. The TikTok star was a child when the gambling industry was last reviewed. And since then, the online sector has exploded. It started at 16 when Lewis saw an online advert and used his dad's account to play some free bets on football matches. With his final 50p, he took a punt on 128,000 to one odds and won. The moment I won the 64 grand, I was just a complete shock. Like it didn't really hit me. I won that amount of money, felt really good, but then actually had to sit on that for about a year and a half until I turned the legal age to gamble at 18 and sit on that feeling of all of those good connotations with gambling. So it was probably the worst thing that happened for me because that high fueled me. All in all, I probably lost over 100 grand to my addiction over the last 11 years and I funded it by selling off price goods. I've taken out payday loans, I've taken out overdrafts and I've borrowed money from friends and family. Anybody can be manipulated by this stuff because of the way it's all set up. It's designed for you to fail. There's hundreds of thousands of people whose job it is to use these games to manipulate you. And streamers and influencers who are doing this are making their job a thousand times easier. And you see these people that have been affected by this, there's horrible, horrible stories of people's lives that were ruined, finances that were ruined because of gambling. And it's just being shoved in everyone's face. You kind of figure out how much money you've been spent on gambling over how many years? Yeah, I, I had to go through, I had to go back through messages, emails, bank statements, um, gambling accounts. I think it transpires that over the course of those 12 and a half years, I've, I've transacted um, about two million pounds worth of bets online, which was frightening in itself. The volume of bets, the amount of bets I was placing every day was, was mad. I had 76 different online accounts opened up in 65 different people's names. So just just the, the sheer scale of, of everything was just way beyond what even I thought it was. And, and in my head, it was pretty big. 20 years ago, there were gambling addicts, sure, but it was a lot harder. And eventually, if you went to the bookie or you went to Vegas, they could shut you down. But now, the casino lives inside everyone's home. And as we discussed earlier in this video, these unregulated sites do not comply with Gamble Aware. They do not allow players to blacklist themselves or to put themselves in timeout. As I was saying before, the money that flows into these gambling companies is absolutely insane. Bottom line from someone who's seen behind the curtain, who's seen the data, do not put your money in these games. Do not play them, don't chance it. Don't trust these streamers who are lying to you and profiting from your losses. They're selling their audience to the highest bidder. They're selling their connection and their trust. I don't begrudge people making money online. If you wanna do sponsorships and ads, absolutely go for it. There's plenty of great content creators out there who live great, amazing lives from ads and sponsorships and things like that. And those people, some of them are filthy rich too. And that's great, get that bag. But don't do it at the expense of your audience. These are serious things that you could potentially be setting these people up for. Financial losses and ruining their life with crippling addiction. These influencers and streamers who are streaming gambling and pushing codes, they're lying to you and themselves. Because no matter how much they say, don't do it, don't gamble, they are streaming themselves, playing hours a day. Of course, people are going to want to 
to imitate their favorite streamer, especially if they're young. Bro, they're this literally, I think this like caused irreparable harm to like thousands of fucking teenagers, 100%, like uh, getting them to be addicted deeply and undesirably addicted to like gambling. So just to give you an idea of how integral these partnerships were to anyone morally bankrupt enough to accept them. Oh yeah, Having this guy the rising. audience watching you gamble, nothing good is gonna come out of that for any of them. There's a reason why you have to be 21 years old to gamble. It's it's a vice. It's it's when you're too young, you can't handle that that stimulation. You can't handle that addiction. It's very 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 dangerous. I didn't I didn't think of that perspective. You know, like people that watch the companies try to get you to do gambling streams. Yeah. Yes, uh, I, I was offered minimum uh, 500 grand to do uh, to play poker, but that's like not even as bad as crypto gambling shit. So just understand that. And their audience isn't going to remember all those terrible losses. They're going to remember the streamer freaking out when they hit it big. And guess what? Gaming companies know this. They know that watching someone lose and lose doesn't matter. And that's why these gaming companies give them millions of dollars and give them money to play and ask them to stream for hours a day and give them codes because they know Oh, all of this. Trust me, I've seen it. I've seen the data. They know people better than people. They know everything about psychology and manipulation. They know what brings people in and what keeps them coming back. Don't play these games. Don't be influenced by these influencers. The only way to win when it comes to gambling is not to play at all. As we've seen throughout this video, there's some really scummy influencers out there, but there's also some great ones. So go and find the great ones because people who don't take any sponsorship that comes their way, people who won't make a crap product just to slap their name on it, people who don't promote products that will actively harm their audience, these are the people we should be focusing on elevating and following. And sometimes people make mistakes. Sometimes they'll take a sponsorship or they'll take a product that they haven't done as much research in or more information comes out. And I'm not saying we have to hold people to some impossible standard. There will be good influencers who take bad sponsorships. People make mistakes. The thing to look out for is how do these influencers react when they do make a mistake. Good influencers will want to make it right. Those people will make a mistake, speak up, apologize, be forgiven, and then they'll learn from the situation. But as you'll see from this video, there are certain influencers that pop up time and time again. Multiple times, multiple scams, multiple sponsorships that are just completely unethical. Those people were chosen particularly because their products, courses, brands, sponsorships weren't a mistake. They were repeated and decisive patterns of behavior. The good influencers who made a mistake or maybe didn't do enough research, when they realized they promoted something that was a scam, they rectified it. They owned up to it, apologized, promised to do better and not do it again. But the influencers who only value money, who just see their audience as an ATM, the first time they promote a bad product, they just thought, look at all this money. I made it and I got away with it. And they just repeated their behavior time and time again. The Paul brothers, the Ace family, the Kardashians, and Shane Dawson. All these people have consistently made decision after decision to lie, scam, and manipulate their audience for money. These people are filthy rich and they choose to scam money out of the people who trust them the most, their fans. They won the lottery by being able to create content for a living, but they still need more. They still aren't satisfied with mansions, fancy cars, millions in the bank, and everything Thing they could possibly want. They have to lie and scam to get even more. And that's why it's so important that we call these people out. It's why channels that speak up about these scams and poor behavior are so important. Channels like CoffeeZilla, Emily D. Baker, D'Angelo Wallace, Smokey Glow, Jay Aubrey, Jesse Smiles, Lily Marston, Cece Suarez, Drew Gooden, Tony Brianne, and others. Because I think we truly cannot grasp the level of influence some of the people mentioned in this video have. We see numbers on a screen representing views and cannot possibly comprehend that each of those numbers represents a living, breathing human being. And by
by exposing these bad actors, hopefully their audience will recognize that some of these influencers do not have their audience's well-being in mind. Because when scammers are exposed, that breaks their audience's trust. And once that trust is broken, it's almost impossible to get back. And when there's no trust, they may be content creators, but they certainly aren't influencers anymore. There are some great influencers out there, but just be cautious. Look into them, look into products, look for the reviews, see what other people are saying, people who are not paid to promote the product. And above all, just remember that if something seems too good to be true, it most likely is. But before we go, I just have one really quick thing I wanted to say. I wanted to tell you about about this amazing product from this amazing company. Just kidding. Bye.